in this video, I will talk about Poincaré Bendixson theorem. So it's a theorem about the first order ordinary differential equations on the plane. So suppose x dot is f of x y, y dot is g of x y. So dot just means d dt. Here f and g are continuous function on the plane. And M is a region on the plane that is compact. So I will explain um, the terminologies used in this theorem later. And uh, the differential equations, the system is positive invariant inside the region M. And there's no equilibrium point in M. Then, you know, you start from any point in M and then uh, the omega p, the omega limit set of the point p is a closed orbit. Okay, next, um, I will just uh, explain what the this theorem means intuitively. So before I can do that, um, we have to be able to you know, imagine the solutions of first order ODE as water flow you know, or some kind of flow. So we have to you know, have this picture of ODEs. So you know, if we think X and Y, they are the position of particles you know, on a plane, then X dot and Y dot, they are the X direction speed and the Y direction speed of the particle. So you can see that you know, we know the speed from the right side. So at any point, there is a velocity vector and uh, the x direction velocity and the y direction velocity can totally be decided at the position of the point position of the particle so if you are at this point if you are you know if the the particle is moving you know based on this differential equation then your velocity is already given is already known so if we you know, draw such an arrow at any point, draw a velocity arrow, so that is the direction you should go, that's the, you know, the speed you should go, and then at any point you can draw such an arrow, you can see these arrows kind of gives you a direction you should flow to. So just by you know, just drawing these arrows, you already can see the trace of the solution. So they are just like a water flow. Um, a solution of a differential equation with initial condition x0, y0 can also be called uh, a flow starting at x0, y0. So sometimes you know we say things like, you know, we start at point x0, y0, and then we flows to other points. We flows to other positions. Let's look at uh, what poincare bendixson theorem says in an intuitive way. First, we have a first-order differential equation that is defined on the plane. Uh, that is just saying that at any point of the plane, you know, an arrow is given. And uh, we require that uh, the arrow change continuously. There is a region M that is compact. So this compact region, so compact just means uh, the region is finite, it is bounded, it does not go to infinity. And also the boundary that you see here is a, a big circle and a small circle. You know, these are the boundaries of uh, the region M is also part of the region. This compact region M is also positive invariant. What that says is just uh, if you start from a point inside the, the region and you flow along the arrow, that is, you know, you generate a solution with the initial condition of this point, the solution will stay inside the region. It will never go outside of the region. And another requirement is there is no equilibrium point. So that just means that every point inside the region is associated, uh, is given an arrow that is not zero. So you cannot you know, start at a point and stay at the point you have to move somewhere else. Then the conclusion of the theorem is that with the above requirement, then we will have 
a solution that looks like a cycle. So we will have at least a solution that looks like a cycle. So you start from any point on this red line, and then you flow with the arrows, and you will go back to yourself, round and round, in a strict cycle. And if you start from a point that is not on a cycle, then you will sp spiral toward a cycle. So let's get closer. So if you don't have a cycle, then the solution will look like a spiral toward a cycle. So you can also you know, start a point that is inside of the cycle, something like this. So all the solutions in this region M is either, is either a cycle, the cycle is called a linear cycle, or it is spiral toward a cycle, like in this fashion. That's all the solutions, all the flows in this region. Um, of course, you know, we are not saying there is only one cycle, there can be more than one cycle. Finally, you know, we want to say, why do we have a, a, a hole in the middle? So the reason that I draw a hole in the middle, that's because uh, we kind of assumed there is no uh, equilibrium point, that is no point that has no arrow. So the thing is, there is another theorem that says, if you have a cycle, so there will be another theorem, that says if you have a cycle like this, then you will definitely have an a, a equilibrium point inside the cycle. That's why we draw a hole and expect uh, the equilibrium point lies inside the hole, so outside the region M. Now I'll break this theorem down for you. So first, uh, you know, we have uh, the assumption that Fg continues on the plane. Uh, we do need f and g to be continuous to prove this theorem. More importantly, we need differential equations to satisfy the uh, unique and existence uh, theorem. So we need the f and g to be good enough so that uh, there is a solution starting at any point and the solution can flow infinitely. And uh, we also don't want uh, two solutions, two flows you know, intersect at any point. To prove the theorem, we also need the solution of the differential equation to depend on the initial condition continuously. For, for those two things to hold, I uh, actually have some doubt that you know, just asking f and g to be continuous is good enough, but I don't want to worry too much about the conditions of f and g. So for one thing, I can never remember them, and for another thing, that you know, the example that we see, usually f and g are functions are very, very nice. So next, I will explain the concept of M being compact. Compact just means that if for any sequence that is contained in M, there is a subsequence that converges to a point in M. So I think uh, that's probably the definition that you, know, you want to use for compact uh, when you prove this theorem. But uh, this does not help us to imagine that, you know, to recognize what region is compact. So another equivalent definition is a region in the plane that is bounded and a closed set. So bounded just means that the set does not go to infinity and a closed set, instead of you know, telling you the definition, I will just give you two examples. So if you have a region like this, that is a disk, and if the boundary is included as your region, it is a closed set. And similarly, if you have a disk, but the boundary is not considered as part of the region, it is not closed. So when you see a bounded closed region uh, in the plane, then it is uh, compact. Next, I will explain the meaning of M being positive invariant. That just means for any point in M, the solution starting at this point is contained in M. In the theorem, we also mentioned there shouldn't be any equilibrium point in the region M, and the equilibrium point just means a solution that is also a constant. So a point that is also a solution. That just means that as time goes on, you're starting from this point as you stay at this point, because the derivative of a constant is zero, so this point, when you plug in into f and g, you will get zero. Next, I will explain what it means to be a closed orbit. So first, an orbit 
is just that you know you start from a point and then you trace the solution. Then this is an orbit. So a closed orbit is when you have this solution traced back to the original starting point. And then you imagine that you know, as time goes on, you will travel round and round in a closed orbit. So one thing I want to say is that this trace back time should be finite. What does that mean? Let's just see a counter example. In this graph, we have two points that are equilibrium points. We have a flow goes from one equilibrium point to the other, and from the other and, and come back. The point here is that uh, this equilibrium point is a solution, and this curve is also a solution. We kind of assumed that the differential equations are nice enough so that uh, two solutions never intersect. So this line and this point, they never intersect. That means this line never reaches at reaches this point. So it actually takes infinitely amount of time for this line to travel toward this point. If you graph the curve in the simulation, you will see a closed circle because the, the, the gap here will be so small no one can see, but it takes infinitely amount of time to travel around this circle. So that is not a closed orbit. Okay, the last thing I will explain is omega limit set. So in the statement of the theorem, it says for any p in M, omega p is a closed orbit. So what is omega p? Omega p is the omega limit set for p. So let's first see one example. What we have is a red circle. And starting at p, we have a solution of the differential equation that goes around and around the red circle. It never touches the red circle, but it is getting closer and closer. So if we have a picture like this, then we will say that the red circle is the omega limit set of P. And the red circle will be denoted as omega P. So here, uh, omega p is a set of points, and the set of points forms a red circle. So this is an example of omega limit set, but we want to define exactly the same thing without using a global picture. So this is the definition. A point q belongs to the omega limit set of p, if P and Q satisfy the following relationship. We can draw a small region around Q as small as we want, and a flow starting at P travels as long as we want, and then after a thousand years, the flow starting at P can still cross this small region that Q specifies. Then we will say that the point Q belongs to the omega limit set of P. So let's say this in a more mathematical way. That is, for any epsilon greater than zero, for any time T, greater than zero, capital T greater than zero, there exists a picture like this. That is, the radius of the region around Q is epsilon, and the, the flow that across the small region is at a time greater than capital T. Then we say the point Q is in the set of omega p. If we come back to this example, so a point Q on the red circle, you know, sh it should be in the omega limit set of p. This is because uh, p travels past Q infinitely many times. You can ask uh, this uh, flow you know, to wait for a thousand years and it still travels, get, travels past Q 
no matter how small the region that the queue specifies. The, the flow starting at a P will travel past, will travel through that small region. In particular, if you have a closed orbit, you have a point Q on the closed orbit, then the omega limit set of Q is the closed orbit.